All right, so you might be wondering, hey, you just did an unboxing video of this. Why are we back here already? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I want to do a short series about starting off with a proto throttle and a DCC and sound equipped engine. What better way to get involved than with the Scale Trains SDL39? Now, if you've got the money for the proto throttle, you probably, this is the price of about two sound locomotives, 500 bucks. Um, 482 I think is what the base model is going for and then the specialty plates get a little higher than that. Um, this one is at 513. I expect the price of these to go up. Everything else is going up in price. Expect these to go up. So buy them now. Um, if you do, tell them you saw it on Sean's Trains. I'd really appreciate it. And this is the latest and greatest. This is got all the updated programming, which we will get into. Um, but this is kind of a back to basics proto throttle experience. This locomotive has been programmed to the road number, nothing else. So we're going to go over programming the throttle. We're going to go over programming the locomotive and making them work together so you get the best experience and bang for your buck. So to start off this episode, we're basically just going to clear this proto throttle of all the programming I just did to it. And we're going to run this thing um, basically like they were both out of the box. So just so you guys know, when you're working with this guy, this is how you toggle through. Set the locomotive number and whatnot. But we're going to do something a little bit different. Somewhere in here. Diagnostics, I believe. Engine history. Ooh, that's that's handy. Somewhere in here you can reset. Factory reset. Hold this for five seconds. I guess you gotta press it five times. Doing a little countdown there. Factory reset. So it's probably not set up to go to my um, uh, receiver, which is fine. We'll just go through, go to command configurations. So we need to set this to number five. So basically E, because this is my fifth throttle. Base address is three. Save that. And we're good to go. So, oh. so basically, Nothing on this throttle has really been dealt with. Um, engines basically untouched for programming as far as uh, lights or momentum or anything go. And so I want to show you guys something else um, about the lights here. Config functions. Horn is F2. That's going to be this guy. That's going to work across all the DCC and sound locomotives. This is your throttle, forward, reverse, and brake if your locomotive is set up to do that. Um, basically your dim and your uh, dim and ditch lights aren't set up for anything yet. Um, bell here is F1. Brake is F10, that's this guy here. Brake off means nothing. Aux 9, so it would be um, for this guy from the factory, for most of your low sound decoders, is going to be drive hold. So it's going to maintain your speed, whatever you do with your throttle. Um, F8 is engine on, you have to toggle through for that. Um, engine stop is nothing, nothing. Rev swap, I don't mess with that. Centered, um, you can now set this up so when you're centered, you can have a sound, a spitter valve, something like that. And we'll get into that later when we program with this locomotive. Alerter, I don't have any function to um, activate that or to turn it off. Compressor sounds, you can add all this stuff in later on. I don't really um, care to mess with that yet, but we'll get there. Brake test. Uh, front headlight, that's what it is. Not forward headlight, but front well i guess it is the same but forward headlight so it's when this guy is over on bright bright and ditch lights is going to activate whatever this guy is plus the ditch lights i don't have ditch lights so i'm not worried about that um and if we go through forward ditch lights forward dim one and the second one is for a second function you can assign into here and then rear headlights is zero so on this locomotive, it's going to be directional, so that's not going to make much of a difference. And then you've got the same functions for back here. Um, up button, 5 momentary. So basically, I'm going to press that, and it'll activate it once. Uh, and this guy is going to be the class lights. We'll get into that later. 
Um, down button is function 6, momentary. If you want to change that to latching, you just do that by changing this. But we're not going to play with that yet. We'll get into setting this up based on the functions of the locomotive. So we've gone through all that. That's saved. Now we can hold this top left button, and it'll take us back to the menu screen. So let's go ahead, throw this guy in the layout. We're going to pull those nasty tsunami locomotives off so we don't have any extra noise. And we're going to pick up and operate our first locomotive. All right, so all we're going to do in this episode here, we went through this. See, it throttle just timed out. That's perfect. We want it to do that so it doesn't drain the battery. Um, so to turn it on, all we have to do is click this button here. Comes on pretty quickly. Lights on, and then we can turn the light off to preserve battery. It really doesn't seem to take that much, at least not in my experience. But all we're going to do is we're going to call up a road number here. We're going to check it out, make sure it works the way we want. And that's going to be it. I want to keep these episodes kind of short. Um, and we'll go through one step at a time. If you have questions, please put them down in the comments. If you have comments, put them down in the comments. Um, like, share, and subscribe. I do appreciate it. So we're going to cycle through here, um, get over to select loco, and we've got nothing there. So we're going to go zero, and then it's 587. We're going to select up. Five eight seven save cool hold this now we should have um, access to the locomotive however turn auxiliary off there that button was depressed um, without the sound fired up it should respond basically immediately just like that but of course we want sound so we're going to go through we're going to select engine on so we go up and it's going to go through the startup sequence now As you can see, some of the light effects have come on. We've got the beacon, or excuse me, we've got the ground lights, and we've got the number boards. And then if we cycle through, which one is it? Um, so because this is not latching, it's momentary, we only get a flicker of the class lights you can see on the nose there. So if I hold it on, it's white. Let go, it's green. Press it again, it's red, let go, and it's off. So we know that we're going to want to set that um, to a latching function. And then we'll want to assign this guy here uh, for something else later on. I think it's F. I think I set that up for dynamic brakes, which we don't have to worry about on this guy. But let's just do a little test here. Uh, headlights should be on because I have it on bright here. And away we go. Of course, we got our frog detector on. This is a scale trains um, museum quality, so there's a few more bells and whistles on here than there would be on a rivet counter, or uh, many more than an operator. We have our bell here. Cool. We should be connected. Let's do a little test pull here. Sure enough, we've got our train. So, there you have it folks. That is just your standard uh, setup and setting up uh, programming a locomotive to your throttle so you can operate. And from here, You've got all your basic functions. If, if this is all you want, it's just a more prototypical throttle. Something that's not tethered down, you can take with you. Has really good reception. Works particularly well with NCE, with minimal setup. Then this is definitely the throttle for you. It is a little bit pricey, but it is very cool. Um, and that's it for this episode. So I'm going to run around with this. Kind of play with it. Make sure everything's working the way it should be. 
Um, and one side note is that these uh, brass knobs here and this colored brake handle did not come with the throttle. That was an added feature I took from one of my other throttles that I put on this one because I thought it deserved it right away. So with that said, uh, we're going to let this guy run around a little bit and then the next episode we'll go through some features of the locomotive and what this guy can do to access those and make operations a little bit more fun. Until then, you guys take care. And a shout out, special thank you to Superior Scenics for sponsoring Sean's Trains and um, we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.